Hello all, uh, welcome to my Linux CBT. Today we are going to uh, take a look at the NIC bonding or what we call channel bonding in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So for this tutorial I'm just gonna use Red Hat 6.5 uh, which is uh, pretty old but not that old. Uh, currently uh, the latest version is 12.7. Okay. So let's see what is uh, NIC bonding or channel bonding first of all. Let me pull up a graphical image here to explain uh, what is NIC bonding. So we have two NICs here. These are all physical NICs that are attached to our server or to our system. So I'm just gonna name it as CTH1 uh, in our case. The first NIC is going to be ETH1 and the second NIC is going to be ETH2. Okay, so we are going to bond these together or bind these together uh, physical NIC interfaces to provide one single bond. So the concept or the idea behind uh, creating a bond is to provide uh, redundancy, fault tolerance and load balancing as well. So we have various modes or uh, various uh, uh, packet algorithm to transmit the packets to the server. So we would be uh, looking at uh, all those modes a little bit uh, later. So as of now, this is the uh, main uh, concept. So we have NIC1, uh, which is going to be ETH1 in our case. And we have NIC2, which is uh, ETH2 in our case. And out of uh, it, we are going to create a bond 0. Uh, it's a new uh, interface. It's a virtual interface, basically. So we are going to create it and we are going to assign an IP address 192.168.1.25. So let's pull up the terminal here. Okay, so first we need to go into the directory where all the Nix configuration file resides. That's basically etc sysconfig network scripts. Do a ls and we have uh, three NICs listed out here and we will quickly pull up the IPs that are assigned to these interfaces. Okay, so ETH0 has been assigned uh, 182.168.1.4 and ETH1 and ETH2 so on. So now we are going to uh, bind these two interfaces together which is ETH1 and ETH2. Let me quickly modify its configuration file but before modifying its configuration file we will go ahead and create a bonding interface which is as of now it's not there so if cfg bond 0 so this is the configuration file or the virtual bonding file we are going to create okay first of all we would need to specify the device Okay, sorry, device equals bond 0 and we can quickly go ahead and provide an IP address 168.1.25 and the net mask would be 255.255.255.0 the gateway would be 192.168.1.1 and one more important configuration for this uh, would be the bonding options. So we will quickly see what is the bonding options that are available in Red Hat Linux. Bonding options. So we have various modes of transmitting packets. Uh, for example, we have uh, round robin method, we have adaptive uh, load transmitting method. I'll quickly explain what are all those methods and we can specify the uh, mode type, uh, which is mode 1. You can either specify the number or the name of the mode, both are accepted. And uh, we should provide the uh, polling interval, which is 100, which I have given. So this polling interval is basing, uh, basically nothing but uh, to monitor each interfaces uh, under that bond. Say like we have two interfaces in a bond and uh, the bond would, uh, you know, like each and every 100 millisecond it would monitor uh, the slaves that are assigned to the bond to make sure that everything is fine. So if one of the slave is not there then which means that it will mark that interface as uh, failed. 
so I'll just go ahead and save this configuration file so after uh, configuring the bond file we would need to modify the slaves which means that the list of slaves that we are going to assign to this bond so I'm just gonna use ETH1 in our case as we discussed earlier ETH1 and ETH2 are the two slaves that we are going to assign to this bond okay so I'm just gonna say nm control the equals no which means that network manager will not be controlling this device and on boot equals s yes, which means that this interface should come up in the server or the machine boots up and the boot protocol is going to be none because the IP address is not going to be assigned to this particular interface it is going to be assigned to the bond ending, bonding interface all we need to specify is the master for this slave the master in our case would be bond 0 and this is going to be a slave device so slave equals s and the same applies for the second nick as well modify it to none and uh, master equals bond 0 slave equals S. We can also specify a boot protocol here as well. So we need to restart our network service. So if I restart the network service, I would lose the I will lose the connection basically to my server so what I'm gonna do is I will bring down the interface one by one manually okay so now we have only one active interface through which we are communicating to the server so let's quickly bring up the bonding interface which we just created okay so now if you see it shows bond 0 and the IP address which we assigned so what this means is basically you know, like the ETH1 and the ETH2 has been binded together to form a bond 0 and we would provide an IP address to the bond so this basically works on the algorithm which I already discussed and I can show you what is it what it is exactly so before uh, going to that section I would uh, like to show you how to see the current uh, status of the bonding which we created that can be seen in cat proc net bonding bond zero the consecutive bond name which we just created so if you see uh, I remember I provided a mode value of one which is nothing but active backup so it says the primary slave is none, currently, currently active slave is ETH1 and the polling interval which we already discussed is 100 milliseconds. So these are all the slave information. So for this bond we have two slaves that are currently assigned. This is how we check the status of our uh, bonding. So this is very useful in a production environment where uh, people always use to check the status of the NICs or the bonds. Let me quickly pull up a uh, small information which I have here about the algorithm which we used. So I was using mode 1 which is nothing but the active backup. So I would like to quickly tell you a, a tip on uh, what algorithm to use on which circumstance or on which environment it should be used. So basically mode 0, mode 2 mode 3 and mode 4 requires a special configuration that has to be done on the switch level whereas the rest of the modes doesn't have to be you know like configured on the switch level it works fine without even a configuration on the switch level so the first mode is uh, balance round robin 
which means that uh, say like we are getting some incoming packets to the server which has a bonding and that bond has two interfaces so the first packet hits the first NIC and the second packets which comes in will hit the second NIC and the third packet which comes in will hit the first NIC again so and it goes on you know like that's called round robin it's basically for uh, load balancing and for fault tolerance the second mode would be active backup currently only one NIC would be active and the other would be will be uh, acting as a back currently only one NIC will be act acting as a active and the other one would be backup so if the active interface fails the backup will automatically kick in and it will start providing the connectivity to our server this is only for fault tolerance and it doesn't support load balancing since only one slave would be currently active I can show you you can see the currently active slave is ETH1 which means that if ETH1 goes down ETH2 will provide the connectivity to this machine okay so let's come back to our uh, modes different modes so next is the mode 2 which is for load balancing and for fault tolerance this is not mostly used across the production environment and mode 3 this is used only for a specific purpose and this is used for broadcasting you know, like all the packets would be transmitted on all the slave interfaces which we have and this is only used in uh, specific use cases and this is not widely used across the production environment okay the second thing would be mode 4 which again uh, as I told you earlier it requires a special uh, uh, configuration that has to be done on the switch side uh, I would say the mostly or the widely used uh, modes that are used are uh, mode 1 which is active backup and mode 5 and mode 6 what is mode 5 this is very important here uh, Mode 5 is adaptive transmit load balancing which means that the packets that are going out of the server will be you know like queued on each slave interface and it would be on a load balancing concept you know like uh, each packet would go on say like we have uh, 5 packets that are uh, queued up the first packet goes via the first NIC and the second packet goes via the second NIC and the third packet goes via the first NIC again and so on so this is how it works and this is the load balancing is done only for the outgoing packets and not for the incoming packets we need to make sure about that before using this algorithm and the final mode is uh, mode 6 which is uh, nothing but uh, adaptive load balancing mode this includes uh, mode 5 which is balance uh, transmit load balancing plus it does the load balancing for the incoming packets as well which means that the load balancing is done on both level for the incoming and the outgoing packets as well so I hope uh, you got the uh, clarity on how to configure the bonding and for and which algorithm should be used for which environment or for which application okay so thank you guys thank you for watching so if you have any doubts please uh, subscribe the uh, video and uh, 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 type in your comments below so that I can respond. Thank you.